What's up guys? It's Carlos from Daily Carry Solutions. I am here at SHOT Show 2020 with Eric from the Outer Limitless YouTube channel and I was able to squeeze a few minutes from our buddy David here at the Wee Knife booth. Hey everybody. <laughs> How's it going? Wow, so uh, it's really busy for you guys here. I'm not gonna lie, I can see why. <laughs> we can get pretty custom traffic at the SHOT Show and very happy about that. At the SHOT Show, the last thing you want to do is stand behind the table with an empty booth. Yeah. But uh, I'm happy that's not the case, but I'm glad we have a couple minutes together so I can show you some, some of the Wii's like, exciting product. And I know you guys are really familiar with the existing lineup, so I'll just talk about some of the new stuff that's already on the market, but since it came out pretty late in 2019 or early in 2020, so let's look at those. The first thing I want to show you is the BUD dagger, backup dagger. So a little bit of the uh, department, redundancy department there. <laughs> It's a, it's a classic push dagger, so hold it, and then any kind of boxing move will get you really big damage. Now, this thing is made of pure titanium, so you're, I think it's about a 2.7 ounce to 3 ounce, so it's literally feather weight. You'll never feel this thing on you. There's a big hole in the middle. It both cut down weight, and it gives you additional carrying options like this. Oh, nice. nice. A different grip option. Exactly. So this is even more secure. Yeah. yeah. Get the uppercut going, get some punches going. Oh, watch out, man. I'm right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a uh, something we're doing for, you know, for that somebody who wants something special. So Also, you know, you're in Las Vegas. You got to have something up your sleeve. Definitely. And I think that this is perfect to be able to go ahead and take out, reach out and touch somebody with. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So I see here there's the standard version and then this is an anodized version anodized that you will yes, offer as well. Okay. And they come with this neck sheet. Yes. With a chain. So Very nice. And as with any Kydex sheets, with the uh, mounting holes on the, you can always sew it into a, a piece of garment somewhere or literally up your sleeve and pull that out when, when the uh, ace up your other sleeve is not working out. Definitely. Okay. This is really nice. And this is called? Uh, the BUD. The backup dagger. The backup dagger. Very nice. So David, we talked about the BUD. Now, everybody knows that the knife is probably one of the first tools that man was able to go ahead and fashion to use uh, right. for everyday, everyday use. Now, um, why don't we try and look at one of the actual tools that's not a knife uh, here Perfect. in the collection. I saw a few here. This one. I'm, I'll show you both versions. This is the natural titanium, and this is the blackened antique titanium. So you can see it shows a much, it's, it's a more of a weather finish. You can see the highlight of the gold edges, but the rest is a, a black with fading in places. Personally, this is one of my favorite finishes. I think it's really nice. Uh, it's a smooth but uh, subtle look. Uh, I, I like how you guys have put in the pocket clip, and, and it's not only a nice pry, but it has the, uh, the, the, the bottle, bottle opener, opener, the linear hole here, and pry bar with a nail puller. Very nice. Yeah. And this one, lightweight, small, it will disappear into your pocket, but it's got power like a monster, and that's why it's called the Godzilla. The Godzilla? Well, it's the different pronunciation, but, but yes, the Godzilla. The Godzilla. Oh, the okay, King of there Monsters. we go. Nice. Okay, and this is currently out now? It's currently out now. It's Perfect. available. Perfect. You can put the King of Monster in your pocket anytime. You heard me. He told me to put it in my pocket. <laughs> anytime. I'm putting it in right now. So we took a look at a, at a dagger back there. Uh, push, uh, the BUD. Um, I see another dagger down here. I think that this is a Justin Lundquist design? That's absolutely right. Okay, let's go ahead and check this out. So tell me a little bit about this guy. Okay. It's called the OSS Dagger and it's named after the OSS dagger from World War II, uh, which was also known as the lapel dagger because you would hide this in your lapel as a deep hideout when you're deep undercover. Now, our, our creation of the OSS dagger from Justin comes with a multifunctional sheath and it is made from uh, 20 CV. So a very tough, very tough material. Now, the sheath, the one you see here, is only one version. So it's a locking clip. You push down on the latch and it opens and it will be your belt clip, so you can carry this on your belt. The mounting hose, you can put a neck chain, which will be included with the knife, so you get belt carry and the neck carry. Once you remove everything from the sheath, it's very flat, and you can definitely sew this into your lapel, recreate that nostalgic lapel dagger. Now, when you hold this, the cheat hand is on the back, 
and it's in the front. So Very you nice. have both sides, you never lose grip when you push it out. It's very flat. You can see how flat it is here. Yeah. Very, very small right. footprint, yeah. But with the G10 on each side, when you do a thumb hold, there's no way this will slip from your grip. You never have to worry about it. And there's a sliding anywhere you want. Now we got a black G10 here, and we have an orange version. It depends on how stealthy you want the OSS dagger to be. <laughs> we also will be including a linear with this. With the OSS being so small, you may need the additional linear to give you additional grips. If you want to do it this way, there, there are jimpings on this side and jimping on this side. So your finger, hopefully it gives you enough friction for light, delicate tasks. I was going to say, looking at this, I noticed that um, this is one of the few knives I've seen from me that happens to be a double-sided uh, uh, yes. double, uh, double blade. That's right. Um, That's right. There's not too many knives that you see like that. It just um, this other design, the ooh. angst. It's actually a single edge design. There's a bevel here. It's not an edge, but it's thin enough so it help, really helps with piercing. With the OSS, given that the special operation heritage, it was only appropriate that we make a double edge. You can also see how the design, uh, I mean, there are certain design traits that translate from one to the other. I mean, from right here and then just the overall blade design, the little, the little fool yeah, inside. Here the grooves with that dagger profile. Very nice. And this uh, this knife is called the angst. The angst is that, and that is also a prototype. This is a prototype, but uh, this should be available soon. Very nice. So I couldn't help but look at all of the different prototypes that you had here, and there were two that actually caught my eye. Uh, I see these two small folders here, these two small flippers, yeah. and when I was looking at the information, they're from Ostop Hill. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about these here. Absolutely. Well. Carlos, you're from Daily Carry Solutions, so I'm sure you are very familiar with the uh, almost becoming a trend in le legislation that says if you want to carry a knife concealed, three inch or under yes. is going to be the rule. Yeah. And when you go to a small knife, this is the perfect choice. You have a compact knife that hides in your pocket that disappears. You can put it in on the bottom of your pocket or you can clip it. But when you take it out when, and you need a small knife to do big jobs, this is the knife to go to. As you can see, they give you plenty of belly, a lot of real estate. It's a very wide blade in relative to its handle size. And when you hold it, even though you're going to get a, about a three finger grip on it, it still feels very secure due to the choil here and the curve and the curvature. Yeah. It's a frame lock, so it also locks securely. And you can notice, you can see this this thing here, the Ostad almost a signature for him. Yes. Yeah. No, very nice. Uh, I mean, Ostop's, uh, Ostop Hell's designs are are very well renowned, and I mean, from what I have seen with some of the knives that I've reviewed from him, uh, I mean, they they've always been great designs, and it's nice to see one of his designs translated into the to the Wii line. I mean, not even through Civivi, straight into Wii. So that's setting the bar pretty high from the very beginning. Um, so I he see that there, there are these two colors. Yeah. And uh, are there going to be any more um, different uh, models of, of this particular knife in the future? Uh, or is it these there, two? There may be, because this is still in the prototype stage. Okay. So uh, when it comes to the market, the colors may change. But I believe we'll definitely have a, a base color and, and then uh, one variant color. Maybe the blue, uh, maybe a different color. But uh, uh, I would say these are probably spec wise. 90% on the dot. Uh, color is something that's fairly subjective. Mm -hmm. uh, we may come up with a whole new neon green kind of <laughs> for the future, but uh, it will be something that we look at uh, what's overall for the Wii line. It should be false pretty flat in that, in that range. Perfect, okay. One thing I did see on here, and I really hope it translates to the full production once it's ready to go, is the blade and the backspacer share the same color. If you see uh, here, there's the black blade and the black backspacer. There is the satin blade, and then kind of the, uh, the, the machined satin almost uh, backspacer. I really like that. I, I think that that's a really intuitive design. It's something that adds a little bit of pop between the scales and the backspacer and the blade to kind of really show it off. This particular combination I really like because it even it even shows with the uh, with the logo yes. subdued. Uh, I think that this is a really nice color. So if you're gonna keep any of these from the prototype stage, 
you might want to consider this guy. Maybe even a black wash blade would look really, really uh, yeah. good on this. I mean, yeah. uh, don't get me wrong, black DLC looks fantastic. But I think if you're really going to put it to, to some use, like Ostop would want a lot of his knives to have, I think that uh, a black wash blade would look really good on this. So. We will definitely keep that in mind. Definitely. Thank you very much for the session. <laughs> and this is um, the, the moat. moat. Alright guys, that's a few offerings from Wee Knife Company and as much as I hate to do this, I have to wrap this up. It was a pleasure running into you here at SHOT Show 2020, David. Always a pleasure to have you guys with us. Oh man, this is the Wee Knife Company booth at SHOT Show 2020. Thank you guys very much.